Good morning, YouTube. It's Rob, One Strange Journey. And today I'm gonna go over like eight or nine tips on how to save money in RV life. Cause it's not all rainbows and butterflies. It can cost a lot of money. There's a lot of ways to lose money. There's a lot of ways to spend your money. And there's a lot of ways to save. I've been doing it for about two years now. Wife's a travel nurse. We travel around the West and take up contracts. And I've learned a few things. So let me share just a couple things I've learned to help you out. Give you a little shortcut to not blowing your whole wad on uh, one trip. All right. All right, another great way to save money in RV life, and I'm sure it's a given for most of us, but is eat at home as often as you can. You know, going out, it's so expensive these days. Heck, eating at home is expensive enough these days. But try to make as many meals as you can at home in your RV. You'll save a fortune over the course of a month. Um, one of my favorite go-tos here is these little pre-done ones. And they're not like TV dinners. These things are good. These carnitas ones are good. The pulled pork. I'm making a pulled pork one right now inside my uh, little pressure cooker here. They're great. They're easy. It's a one skillet type of meal where it only takes one pan to make it, which is great when it comes to cleaning pans. You know, you don't want to have to see it just got done now. They're quick. They're easy. They're cheap. And for three people like us, it's under $10 dinner. And in this day and age, that's hard to beat. So definitely one of my biggest tips in RV life to save money is to make your meals at home. And that goes even if you're not in RV life. You'll save a lot more money than you think. Make it at home. Another good way to save money in RV life is plan your route accordingly when you're going from point A to point B. You'd be amazed at how much you can save at campgrounds in one town over another. Price them all out. Sometimes going the extra 20, 30 miles that you're going to go anyways could save you 30, 40, 50 a night. I seem to average about 50 bucks a night at these campgrounds. You know, there's apps out there like RV Life to help plan the most efficient route to get from point A to point B as possible. And you can check the little box and all the campgrounds pop up and you can price them all out and see the reviews. Super convenient, but um, it makes a big difference when you're going 1,000, 2,000 miles. You might stay at five, six, seven different campgrounds, you know, when it's 30, 40, 50 bucks extra each night. So definitely plan your route out accordingly. Another way to save money in RV life is check out RV park seasonal rates, their monthly rates, their weekly rates. If you're not in a hurry and you can take your time, you can save a fortune over a monthly rate as opposed to a nightly rate. A park might be 60 bucks a night and it might be 600 bucks a month. If you have time to take your time, like we stay places for months at a time, so it works out real well for us. But if you're not in a hurry and you can stay at one for a week, it's gonna work out much better than just getting that nightly rate. And seasonal works out the best. Seasonal will be even less over the course of three or four months. You can really save a lot of money. And just be aware, those RV parks that are in areas that are sought after tourist destinations, Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, all those, they're gonna be a fortune, especially if you go during peak time. So don't think you're getting any deals anywhere like that. So be aware where you're going at what time of year too. So that can make a big difference on what you're gonna pay when you go to plan your trip. Now, another way you can save money, and I'm not big on this because I'm not all set up for it, but if you're set up at all, if you're able at all to boondock, do free overnight camping, if you're going on a trip, you can save a lot of money. You'll save yourself 50, 60 bucks a night, maybe even more. So if you got some solar panels, if you got some batteries, or if you could just rough it for a night, look into boondocking, check out where the Walmarts are around along the way. Maybe call ahead, see if they allow free overnight camping because not everywhere does anymore. So you might be able to check out, see if there's any easy to get to BLM land that's not gonna be a pain in the butt to get to off the freeway. That's a lot of time free overnight camping. So plan accordingly. Another way you could save money is there's lots of clubs, lots of memberships they offer for us RVers. From gas cards, especially if you use diesel fuel, you can save a fortune by signing up for these memberships. I, I haven't even done it yet, to be honest. But there, I know they're out. There's also park memberships like Thousand Trails. For some people, it seems to work out well. You investigate if it's good for you from where their locations are and how often you have to move and all that. They got all these different tiers, but there's a bunch of different discount plans that you could, membership plans that you can join. 
Another tip to save money in RV life is if you're at a campground, you're already paying your uh, space rent, try not to use your propane if you don't have to, to cook. You know, I got one of these little pressure cookers. We got a couple other electric cookers. I got uh, the air fryer over here. Try to use these as often as possible. Save that propane. You're already paying extra for the propane. May as well use the electricity as much as possible. It's a great way to save that money when every penny counts on the road is use your electric cookers as often as you can. Also, it kind of goes on with the electrical appliance. When it comes to heating, try to use your electric heaters. If you're at a campground and you're already paying your lot rent and you get free electricity, use your electric heaters when at all possible. Now, the one caveat I would put on that is if it's below freezing outside, don't. You got to use your furnace because your furnace is going to generate heat down next to your pipes to keep your pipes from freezing. So you don't want to depend on only your electric. But if it's above freezing and you're at a park and you don't pay the uh, separate electric bill, use your little space heaters as much as you can. Use your little, if you have one of these heaters, a uh, little fake fireplace deals, whatever kind of electric heating you have, use that over your propane furnace because you're paying for that separate. I hope those tips help. I know some might be obvious, but to some people, they're not obvious. I just wanted to share with you what I've learned. If anything helped i'd appreciate a like i know it's not a big deal but you know it kind of helps me get a little bit out there on the algo and let me tell you i need some help um anyways well i appreciate you watching you can leave, leave a like maybe a comment any tips you have so i'd appreciate it and thanks for watching i'll talk to you later bye